Can you hear me now? Testing one, two, three. Test, test, test. If you can give me an update on whether you can hear me, that'd be great, David. Uh, let's see. Hopefully we've got sound now. I guess the way to figure that out is I can jump over to my channel on YouTube and see okay we've got sound all right sorry about that uh, I put the ATEM mini back into the the uh, mix of equipment and I forgot to turn on the microphone <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll start from the top. Welcome to another Sunday live stream. Uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We're talking about uh, web administration, uh, web-based server administration software. Uh, so we're going to be talking about Cockpit for Linux, and we're going to be talking about Windows Admin Center for Windows Server. So to enable all of this, I have a fresh uh, Windows Server 2022 core installed. Uh, I've, I've also got VMs of the desktop version, but um, for extra performance and to uh, make this go a little smoother, uh, we're going to use the core version in this uh, video. Um, and I've got a fresh version of Ubuntu server uh, installed with the updates um, and basically I've done nothing else to it so uh, we are going to switch over with the press of a button to the Windows desktop isn't that special okay so as you as you may be aware, my approach to Windows is a little bit different. Um, I love using Winget. Uh, for those not familiar, um, Winget is the package manager that Microsoft has built for uh, Windows. And I guess I can't bring that across. Um, okay, that's because I'm in full screen on the Windows. Anyways, um, I followed the um, instructions that Chris Titus has put out uh, for installing Winget without going to the uh, Windows or the Microsoft Store, whatever the heck they're calling it these days. So I've got Winget installed on here. And as you can see, you've got a list of commands that you can use. Uh, which is all in good. So, um, what we want to install on this particular machine is uh, the Windows Admin Center. So, we'll search for it first. Uh, Winget search Windows Admin Center. And it'll spit back the ID, which is what you need to uh, use to install it. And in true uh, Microsoft PowerShell fashion, it's longer than it needs to be. Um, so, winget install win, uh, Microsoft.WindowsAdminCenter. And this will pull down the 79-ish megabyte uh, Windows Admin Center and install it on the Windows 10 machine. Now, you can install Windows Admin Center on the server itself. Um, if in the case where you're running the... Um, the uh, desktop version. 
there's a website you've got to go to and you grab the MSI installer uh, this one right here you just search for Windows Admin Center on Google and it will take you to uh, the download page um, and you can grab that so um, yeah uh, so that will take just a minute uh, so we're going to open up, while we're waiting, we're going to open up a PowerShell that's not administrator. Um, and we're going to connect to our Ubuntu machine. Let's see if I can get back to my notes. There we go. Uh, so we're going to say SSH username at our IP address. Uh, no putty involved okay so we are connected into our Ubuntu machine so we'll clear the screen and we are going to say sudo apt install dash T we're going to use an environment variable I think that's all we need hyphen backports and the package we want to install is cockpit hopefully this works um, okay so that did not work as intended so let's see supposed to be nope all right we'll come back to this um, okay so the Windows Admin Center is installed so we should be able to open that up on here um, Should just be running on localhost. Uh, does it like it in Chrome? All right. Well, we'll. Um, we'll get around this. Uh, worth pointing out is that even though the IDs are in mixed case, um, Windows PowerShell is case insensitive, so it does not matter if you type those exactly as they're shown. Uh, just something to keep in mind. All right, let's uh, see what we can see. Looks like everything is broadcasting nicely. Um, okay, so we'll launch Firefox on here. And we will go to localhost port 443 and see if that's going to nope okay um, when I installed this before I did it on the actual server so we'll just launch it that way Windows Admin Center again still Chrome is not liking us and we'll see if we get any better luck no
Okay, here we go. Select a certificate. Okay. All right, so we've got Windows Admin Center. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so people can see. So, all right. So, of course, we've got notifications up here, which is all good. Um, and we've got different things that you might be used to seeing in Windows. So we're going to go to add. We're going to add a server. Let me let these notifications get out of the way. That's better. Um, lots and lots of notifications. Okay. Mm. Okay. And then it reloads. Okay, maybe we can try this again. All right, so we want to add a server. We're going to say add. Go back to my notes. And we want... Um, SRV Headless, I believe is the name I gave it. Uh, 1674, let's take a look here. Um, no, we don't want to restart that now. We want... Uh, 8 for network settings, 124. Okay, so we are going to select use another account for this connection. And click add. And then we've got our Windows Server. We're going to say never to that. Okay, so it gives you managing as last time connected. And then to go to a device and manage it, you just click on the name or the IP address. Um, see if we get any closer <laughs> um, just slightly different running this uh, from a, a desktop machine uh, or VM versus running it right on the server but um, Where that was the oh I know what I did uh, let's see I have anybody else uh, good morning Catherine may have missed when you came in um, Try that. That should be it. I have the penguin installed on my windows. All right. Um, let's 
let's see. Uh, Libre Wolf is a version of Firefox uh, that has some of the more proprietary stuff stripped out. Um, some of the stuff that people tend not to like. Um, but um, I've not I've not used Libre Wolf before. Um, Okay, so I think we're caught up. Uh, okay, so as you can see, this tells us the server has a reboot pending. You may experience errors or unexpected behavior until the reboot is performed. So we can go ahead and initiate the restart from the Windows Admin Center. And that will do its thing. And of course, that'll take a couple of minutes before it comes back up. Uh, so, uh, we can get rid of that and we can come back here. Um, oh, uh, right. Um, let's see what this says. Ubuntu underscore code name. Oh, version underscore code name. Um, that's what I wanted to do. No. Um, let's do it this way. Might be a slightly older version, but we'll make it happen. So, one of the things here about Cockpit is that it runs on multiple versions of Linux and it adapts to the software that's installed as far as some of the options it offers. Uh, there's also a quite extensive um, number of add-on packages for it. Uh, which can range from anything from managing SMB shares, uh, so Samba, um, to uh, many, many other things. So, um, let's see if we can see what... Uh, the newest version is 278, released in mid-October. The, um, hmm, I found this right off yesterday, but, uh, anyways, there are, there are additional, uh, pieces that you can integrate into Cockpit, and, extend the capabilities. So let's come back here and see if we can jump back into our Windows server. I probably stalled enough that we can get back into that, I hope. So. I installed WSL, now I have a penguin in Windows, yep. Um, use cockpit to manage Active Directory backup domain controller on a Pi 4. Very nice. Okay, so let me um, do this. 
and see where our oh it's still coming up <laughs> might have had a an update pending yep 30 percent complete okay so we're going to be waiting a minute on on windows so we, we will jump over uh once i put my fingers on my notes again we'll jump over to On. jump over to our Linux box and um, all right okay so we will bypass the warning there and make this a little bit larger. Log in. And so the nice thing with this is it respects um, capabilities like sudo on Linux. So you can say turn on administrative access and then you have to enter your password just like doing a sudo command at the command line and then you can um, view all your information and um, different things on the server uh, so storage manager is installed uh, checking for software updates. Cannot refresh cache whilst offline. Okay. Not sure how we can be offline if we are um, connected from a remote machine. <laughs> um. And it's returning pings from Google. Oh, exit that. Okay, that looks better. Loading available. Yeah. Okay, so there there might be a couple of glitches with this current version. Um, but nonetheless, this provides a very usable um, web administration center for Linux um, and you can install your NFS support here if you want to do that uh, there are modules for cockpit that allow you to do uh, virtualization management and all kinds of different things um, here's the users and You've got services that are installed, available, and or running. Um, so obviously this machine doesn't have Thunderbolt or else this would be enabled and running, we would hope. Uh, so yeah, uh, cockpit is very handy to have around if you're running a Linux server without a graphical desktop, um, you know, much like the Windows Admin Center over here. Um, let's, uh, let's see, make that out of full screen, we'll see. And that is, in fact, ready now. All right, so let's try this again. Connect to our headless Windows Server 2022 core system. And that should 
let us in. So, um, I did run a poll earlier in the week, uh, and uh, not a lot of people had used the, the Windows Admin Center. So, um, I wanted to, since I'm, I'm starting up some, uh, I'm, I'm restarting uh, the continuation of the Windows Server series that I started earlier in the year, um, I thought, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take my own sort of path towards Windows Server and, uh, not make it the same run of the mill video that everybody else puts out. And so I decided to do things with, uh, Winget on the Windows desktop, the Windows 10 side and do the, um, at least in part, I'll do the Windows Admin Center um, to to manage the Windows servers. So um, that's um, that's kind of my approach here. Uh, I have no server. Can I install the admin control? Um, if you have more than one Windows um, 10 or 11 system, you could. Um, the um, This main section here, it will let you connect to uh, desktop machines as well to manage them. Uh, so yes, you could install this on one uh, Windows machine a Windows 10 or 11 machine and use it to do some of the management for the other machines right from the web browser without having to connect to those other machines. Um, I do not have Active Directory configured currently so obviously you don't need to um, it, it's not a requirement to use this so um, yeah uh, let's see Um, all right, so, uh, welcome Raymond. Let's see. Okay. So we'll hit this here again for the windows server. Make that a little bit smaller so we can fit more information on screen. And check out my notes here. Um, so just just to uh, give a little background on some of these window or um, web-based administration um, tools, um, Webmin has been around, uh, which is um, another web-based administration package for Linux. Uh, this has been around since 1997, which ironically is the same year I started using Linux. Um, and I have used this on servers before. Uh, it can be very useful. It's also a little on the intimidating side. Um, it's, it's more akin to you know, building everything in kind of the way the, the Windows Admin Center did. Uh, so that's been around since 1997. Um, the Cockpit Project has been around since I believe it was 2013. And I think I've closed that window already. Um, about Web Console. Uh, okay, they don't have a starting and ending date. So this is version 2.6.4. Uh, so this is a slightly older version. Uh, the current version is 2.7.8. Um, so, um, but yeah. And then Windows Admin Center. Um, uh, 
was born out of Project Honolulu. Uh, and this is a relative newcomer to web-based administration. Um, the initial release was in 2018. Um, so thankfully Microsoft has got on the bandwagon. Um, you, you know, I, I think once they release the windows core versions without the desktop, I, I think it was writing on the wall, that something like this was coming. Um, so, uh, for me, uh, since I'm primarily a Linux user, uh, this adds a whole new level of flexibility. Uh, for instance, I can install uh, the Windows Admin Center directly on a server um, running Windows Desktop, um, and then I can connect to it with a web browser from really any machine, Mac, Linux, Windows, uh, BSD, you, you know, what have you. I mean, you could use an iPad if you really wanted to um, torture yourself. Um, so, you, you know, I guess another nice thing about this is that um, if you are going that way or your company has mandated going that way, uh, you can access uh, Azure services. Um, I know a lot of people are going to a hybrid Active Directory um, especially those Microsoft 365 users. Um, and this makes that uh, transition uh, a little easier. Um, I don't see myself ever paying for the Azure services, but at the same time, I'm not going to buy a license for Windows Server. <laughs> That's why I'm using the evaluation version. Um, so, you know, but there are a lot of tools available in here that um, you would previously have to dig through multiple panels uh, in the server administration or server administrator tool uh, on Windows Server to make this um, make this all work for you um, but you know I can add local users and groups um, if I wanted to, and, um, this does take a little while to load. It's not, well, my VMs aren't the fastest things out there either. Um, but, um, you can set up remote desktop, you can set up roles and features, uh, which is one of those things where people typically spend a good amount of time. Um, and you could kick off the install, uh, the installation of uh, Active Directory and uh, DNS and other things that are required for Active Directory right from here. So, um, you, you know, it's just one of those things um, before you do this on your home network. If you're going to do it in a home or lab network, do your homework first. Um, Active Directory likes to control DHCP. Uh, you can leave the DHCP on the router, uh, but it prefers, prefers to have DHCP running on the server. Uh, so, you know, there are a couple of approaches you could take with this. You could have, uh, all your Active Directory stuff, uh, connected to a switch from the Windows server, uh, and, and, or on a VLAN that the, a, say a secondary, uh, network, uh, cable is connected to from the Windows server to that switch. Uh, 
on a switch port that is um, set to a VLAN and you could run a DHCP server just on that second network card uh, for that network. Um, so just something to be aware of. You don't want to have two um, DHCP servers on the same network or you're going to have problems and a whole lot of headaches, especially if there are other people in your household that may depend on this server um, and, and the network. Um, so, uh, this is, um, well, I can't say it's, it's completely new to me. Uh, I, I beta tested Project Honolulu. Uh, before they renamed it Windows Admin Center. Um, and then I haven't really touched it for two or three years now. Um, but uh, when I heard that Microsoft was building Project Honolulu, it immediately piqued my interest and, um, y you know, got me really thinking about uh, the usefulness of this and um you, you know how the um how this could be used with the the windows core product windows server core product uh because you know it's going to take some of the some of the um requirements and notch them down a level um so for instance, right now, uh, this is claiming it's using 100% of the CPU. Uh, why that's the case, when I gave it four cores, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but uh, maybe, well, I only gave it six gigs of RAM and it's using not much. Um, so, that's a little bit of an overview of uh, a couple of products, um, one for Windows and um, we look primarily at Cockpit for Linux um, that, you know, will allow you to manage things from the, from a web browser. Uh, and this, you know, in my estimation is, is a hugely, um, versatile uh, way to do things and of course in both cases just to make this point uh, you can access um, terminal uh, this is bash on Linux and um, you can jump into PowerShell on Windows um, so, you, you know, you've got, you've got the full power available. So anything that you don't find exposed in the, in the web interface, um, you can jump to to PowerShell and run that there. Okay, let me take a look at chat. Uh, let's see, Jason's lab is in the house. Welcome, Jason. Um, and we've got somebody with a question. Yes, please ask away. I'm, I'm not going to try to butcher your, your screen name. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of, kind of cool having, um, you know, in a single web browser having, um, Windows Server Administration and Linux Server Administration right next to each other. Uh, 
you know, that's um, something that's relatively new. Relatively new. So, um, and, you know, when I go through this in a little more detail, I will not be going through every single one of these um, items on this left-hand side, um, especially things that are cloud-enabled uh, because Microsoft charges for that stuff, and this is an evaluation <laughs> of Windows Server, not, uh, not a fully uh, licensed purchased one. But um, again, since there has been some interest shown in me doing some Windows Server videos. I um, I wanted to do that and approach it in my own way, and this is part of that approach. So, um, all right. So here's our question. I'm trying to move a DLL file on my Windows C drive, but I get the message saying I don't have permission. Do you know how I can bypass this or get permission? Uh, Catherine or David or Jason, anybody want to chime in on this? Um, honestly, I would approach it by going into an administrator level PowerShell and I would move it from the command line. Um, I don't use Windows enough to have gotten into this situation where I needed to move a specific DLL. Um, so maybe one of the others in the chat can chime in on this. Um, I, I will admit my, my weakness in this area when it comes to something this technical but I would approach it from from the uh, from PowerShell uh, so for instance here I'm logged in as administrator and um, um, you know I can pretty much move anything I want on the system if if I wanted to do that um, so I hope that helps uh, looks like David is in agreement and would move it from the command line as well. Um, so that, uh, I guess to quote country music, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Mark it on your calendars. I, I don't quote country music that often. I'm really not a fan. Um, I'm more likely to quote Ozzy Osbourne and 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 tell you of all th all the things I've lost, I miss my mind the most. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's bring my ugly mug back on the screen for a moment, and we'll see how things are going. Um, we're running. Um, we're running a little ahead of schedule. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really not a fan. I'll, I'll admit that I, I will occasionally, I've got a Johnny Cash greatest hits. I'll, I'll give Johnny Cash a pass. Um, but in general, I, I don't do country music. Um, but, you know, to each his or her own. I know there are a lot of people out there that like it, and that's fine. Um, but I came up in the uh, the '80s, and hair metal was was where it was at. Uh, so, um, yeah, I guess. Uh, um, let's see. I listen to country whenever I can get a radio channel that has it. Unfortunately, it is illegal in most of New York, I believe. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so I guess um, one one big change that I've made this week is I've got a powered 
uh, HDMI splitter so I'm able to take my desktop uh, the Mac desktop and run it into the splitter and then into the ATEM Mini Pro um, and so I can switch uh, back and forth uh, with that and I can do you know little uh, transitions when I do the switching um, the one thing I don't like about this setup <laughs> I, I, I'll have to say um, my my new monitors that I got a couple of months ago are 75 Hertz and the splitter dropped the one monitor down to 60 um, so I'm not super thrilled about that but um, it does allow me to use the ATEM Mini Pro which was a not inexpensive piece of equipment to acquire so I'm hoping that um, I can continue to move this all forward uh, the other change is, is the um, uh, the Nexigo Iris. Um, I got a pair of um, these uh, mounts. This is the other one. Um, so these are desk mounts for cameras, and it's they've got a couple of different um, pieces that can screw onto the top here. Um, so you could put a, a DSLR type um, or, or a mirrorless like the um, Sony ZV-1 um, or the variations on that camera. Um, and it does offer this type of um, mount as well with the, with the easy eject. Um, Uh, piece so you mount this on the bottom of your camera and then it clips in um, and it gives you a solid locking mechanism um, I will probably switch the the iris over to this um, and for anybody that's looking for a webcam I I absolutely recommend the the Nexigo iris um, they're actually available on Amazon right now. Um, the MSRP is two fifty or two forty nine ninety nine, uh, and they're available for two twelve uh, forty nine right now. Um, and I almost pulled the trigger on buying a second one. Now that I'm using the the ATEM Mini Pro again, um, it could it could be interesting for some some particular setups uh, on this. Um, but the other thing is that since the ATEM only has um, four inputs, um, um, I can hook up one additional one additional computer and the um, ET24 um, scanner the the book scanner that I got over here um, so um, I need to step away for just a moment uh, but I will be back momentarily and we'll just um, See what we can do. Uh, I will return shortly. Add banner. I wonder if I can do a fade to black. I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had my gallbladder out years ago, and sometimes things sneak up on me. So, <laughs> um, let's see. All right, so, um, yeah, uh, I guess for those of you out there who are, have stuck around, um, if you've not used the Windows Admin Center before, um, has this piqued your interest at all? Is this something that you would uh, at least try out and, and use to... Uh, do some augmentation of the Windows uh, server desktop tools um, or the um, what are they called the rat the remote uh, remote access tools um, or remote server access tools something like that RSAT something I don't know um, anyways um, I think this is is a huge step in the right direction um, for Windows Server um, and um, you know having having the um, let me jump back to the Windows desktop again having um, uh, I mean likewise having Winget installed on um, a Windows desktop machine, um, I'm now able to completely bypass ever having to launch Microsoft Edge, um, and I can just come into the desk or the the terminal and uh, install. Um, you know other tools um, so uh, for instance you, you know uh, let's see uh, good one is um, when get search bleach bit and it's bleach bit dot bleach bit um, And to me, um, this is this is much easier than uh, going out to a website and grabbing the executable file, installer file, or the MSI, downloading it, and installing it. Uh, this is, y you know. 25 years of, of Linux usage <laughs> and this this is it translating to a Windows world and you, you know I'm I'm all about it so you know there have been um, other things that I've covered in the past uh, such as chocolatey and I'm still a fan of chocolatey uh, in fact, my my physical Windows 10 box, I've got Chocolatey installed and Winget, um, and you you know the two kind of complement each other. So there's some software that's available on one and not the other, um, and there is a free version of Chocolatey. Uh, the thing I've found is that more and more you're seeing a lot of the open source uh, tools available in Winget, um, which you know means that you don't have to be downloading um, Chocolatey in order to get this 
functionality of a package manager. Um, so, you know, um, GIMP is another one. Um, you know, you've got uh, for video editing, Shotcut is on here. Um, Caden Live. And um, not sure if you can get DaVinci Resolve through here or not. Um, does not look like it. Um, but, um, you know, there are a lot of tools available in WinGet. And, you know, before you open a web browser to install, to, to go download something, I love being able to just pop open a PowerShell uh, window and uh, grabbing it this way. Now, do I think my 76-year-old father is ever going to do this? No, not on your life. Um, at the same time, though... Um, you know, you couple something like this uh, Windows Admin Center with zero tier, and which offers uh, VPN type functionality, or you could use. Um, Tail scale as well, which they call zero config VPN. Same basic premise behind both pieces of software. Um, you install it on two computers, you put them on a, um, they call it an overlay network. And so they get an IP address on this overlay network, and then any computers on the overlay network. Um, can talk with each other. Uh, there are, you know, things involved. You've got to approve anybody that tries to join uh, your overlay network on zero tier or tail scale. And, you know, it makes it nice if you're helping out a friend or relative or uh, something like that, someone like that, um, you can do more work remotely with, you know, standard tools without turning to something like, you know, what I've been using for years is, um, splash top for remote, uh, desktop connectivity. Um, and you know, with, with zero tier and tail scale, you can be running Linux and connect to a windows machine. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of an a la carte solution to, um, to the problem. Um, uh, it needs to be on when you want to access it. Uh, so... I don't like connecting to other people's machines without them being aware that I'm doing so ahead of time. Um, and so normally, you know, like my dad is a good example. I will uh, call him and say, hey, I want to do a checkup on your computer. Can you turn it on and then just um, walk away from it until I'm done doing updates and other things? And, you know, for the better part of 10 years now, that's worked out, well, maybe more than 10 years now, uh, it's worked out really well. Um, I started with a different product uh, than Splashtop, and that product was sold out to another company, and um, I was forced to switch. So I've been with Splashtop for probably at least eight years now. And it's, it's been pretty solid for what I wanted, want to do with it. Um, 
But that being said, you know, those types of tools, a lot of them are built on, um, you know, a custom developed fork of VNC and you know you want to make sure you're using a company that updates their things um their their software on a regular basis if you're going to use a a vnc based um tool so you know i guess that uh without get getting completely off our topic for today i guess that um that um kind of wraps up what I had to talk about um, hopefully people got something out of this I, I know this is a little outside my typical uh, wheelhouse as far as what I make my videos on I'm I'm trying to expand a little bit and um, y you know not uh, paint myself into a corner on the types of videos I can make uh, so hopefully, hopefully this um, gives people a little bit of a taste of, of what's to come. Um, you will see these tools again, and you know it's it's um, just the way forward in in my opinion. You know, I I don't want the command line completely taken away from me. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily want to, to use remote desktop all the time either. Um, you know, I, I still maintain that, you, you know, when Microsoft, when Microsoft started releasing the Windows Server core versions, um, you know, they had several things in mind, I'm sure. Um, one being their, their cloud aspirations at the time, which, you know, is now their, their suite of Azure branded things. Um, but also they got on the same mindset that the Linux de developers have been on for years. And that's why do you need a graphical interface on a server? Um, you, you know, the, um, the web management, web, uh, management tools for servers bridges the two sides. So, all right. Are there any other questions, comments, suggestions for topics? Um, Let's see. Always get approval from the other person. Great. I I love it. I I wouldn't um I wouldn't necessarily be comfortable with people that didn't get that permission beforehand from people. <laughs> uh if you want to use the search window in Libre Wolf about config um okay. Nice. I might have to check LibreWolf out and, you know, give it a spin and see, see what I think of it compared to Firefox. Um, I've been using Firefox since the time it was called Phoenix, um, which, you know, the BIOS manufacturer sued them or threatened to sue them, uh, and they ended up changing the name. Um, um, so it went from Phoenix to Firebird, and then the open source database company uh, wasn't happy about it, so they changed it to Firefox. So, um, yeah, since probably 2003 or four ish. Um, or three or five. I'm, I'm not sure when Firefox was released. Um, we'll find out here. Let's 
see if they have that detail in their in their um, history. Okay, 2002 was Phoenix. Um, I think they might have left off the Firebird um, part of the history. But anyways, um, yeah, so 20 years I've been using Firefox. <laughs> that's that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, time flies when you're having fun, right? Um... Also applies to Firefox and Waterfox the same. Very good. Uh, Thunderbird was fine. All right. Yeah, I've recently started using Thunderbird again, and and I'm kind of impressed with the the newest versions of that product. So. All right. On that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up and uh, see what I can do here um, now that I've got the ATEM Mini in place um, I, I need to tame some cables um, and reroute some things and probably that's going to mean a trip to Home Depot to get some uh, clips and, and other doodads to uh, to uh, wrangle these cables uh, but I think everything is coming together um, and who knows I, I may I may start um, uh, investigating again the tools that are out there for handling um, chat um, outside of um, uh, you know not using OBS or StreamYard because I can stream right from the ATEM Mini Pro um, without without um, using those tools uh, my, my big reason for being hesitant to do that too much is because I can't put chat messages up on the screen um, natively uh, I've got to come up with some tool that allows me to do that so um, we'll we'll be working on that here um, uh, no I haven't got the gasket yet um, I sent out for it I did I did make the contact to them uh, and uh, it should now be on its way, um, hopefully, uh, because I'm I'm itching to get that machine back up and going and start using it for some of these crazy videos that I've kind of got planned. Um, that uh, that poor old One U rack server is just um, it's it's getting too old. It's just getting too old. Uh, but I've had that since, what, 2013? And it was used when I got it. Uh, so, you know, you figure, um, it's probably 14 or 15 years old. So, uh, it's it's time it's time it's um, you know thing still runs it's just the the workloads that I try to put on it um, are, are just too much if I was just installing a single um, you know like Ubuntu server directly on it and you know just using um, cockpit to manage it I think it would be fine for some things but it's old it's power hungry it's loud 
And, you know, I just feel like it's time to move on. And that's where that I-9 system has really been my push is, you know, I, I want to get rid of that old server. Um, and potentially consolidate, you know, a couple of the other Proxmox servers and um, get rid of those as well or repurpose them. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm interested to see um, see what uh, I can get done with that and um, you know just just move on to something bigger and better and a little more modern. So um, you know, if I won the lotto tomorrow, then you know I'd go build myself a 7950 um, system, uh, likely with a a uh, Radeon 7900 XTX, um, the the RX 7900 XTX because the 4090s are are prone to being a fire hazard, uh, from what I've read, but. Um, uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see, um, we'll see what happens. Getting rid of something that works is always a challenge. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Why spend money if you don't have to? Um, but... You know, now that I've got the the studio pretty much kitted out with the ATEM Mini and the microphone and the lighting and the iris camera, um, which, you know, I'll probably keep my eye out for Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales and maybe pick up a second one of these um, because it, it could be useful to be able to set up in another location in the apartment and... Uh, record footage there as well and um, you know bring things together from different areas so just today moving toward replacing my editing workstation nice so all right well we've gone for an hour and 17 minutes uh, one last message in my case I spent the money and built the machine but afraid software transfer will be too many problems. So I got a 5600G for 114.99 yesterday. Nice. Yeah, I've I've heard that even like the the 5800X3D is um, marked down to like 315 dollars. Um, Makes it kind of tempting to just build an AM4 system <laughs> to to uh, pair with the the i9, um, and uh, uh, my my I guess my goal at some point is to have uh, a cluster of three Proxmox servers so that I can do live migration of VMs from one to another. Um, but I, I'd like to do it in such a fashion that they're all modern enough machines that it, there aren't going to be a lot of problems. Uh, the one thing I've got to figure out, though, is um, if, if you can migrate um, without issues from Intel to AMD and vice versa, um, I've read before that that's somewhat prone to issues. So <clears throat> we, we will see. All right. <clears throat> On that note, since my throat's getting a little dry, I'm going to let you find people go for the afternoon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for stopping in. And, uh, I will hopefully see a lot of you in the next live stream. Uh, there are videos recorded for the week, and I just need to sit and edit them this afternoon. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.